Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hey, family. My name is Alice, and I'm a grateful member of Alcoholics Anonymous. I want to thank the booker for the invite. Like it's an honor to speak at a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. And, you know, I'm, I'm super, super happy to be here with a bunch of people that I know and I love that are my trudging buddies. I'm in the middle of moving. You hear the movers in the background. Hold on. I'm going to go close the door. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Um, I want to qualify and then I want to really, really speak to the newcomers. I missed the first couple people, but you know, Tyler and, and Tiffany and Octavia, Selena, Jocelyn, Brent and Brent and John and Julie, let me just tell you this. You never have to drink again. More than you never have to drink again, you never have to feel like this. How do I know how you feel? Because I used to feel like that. I'd wake up with a sense of impending doom. I, something bad was happening. It was going to happen. I just... You know, I'm a person that has suicide ideation. I've had it my whole life, and, like, it was always on me, and I felt hopeless. Like, the book talks about it. The book, When I say the book, I mean the book Alcoholics Anonymous, which, let me tell you, has the instructions about how to get to joy and freedom, has the instructions for how to not be glum, has the instructions about no matter what's happening in your life, to have the ability to choose joy. How about that? You know, when I was I was drinking, I sh- and I should tell you, my sobriety date is May 21st, 1987. And I know that's stunning. I know that's stunning. Um, when I got to Alcoholics Anonymous and people said that they had that much time, I was like, yeah, you're a liar. Because it was inconceivable to me that you could not drink for that long. I'm just inconceivable to me. Um, I took my first drink at four years old and... Um, You know, I'm going to tell you things. Nothing I say except my personal details and my story are original. Everything that you hear me say, I've gotten from other members of Alcoholics Anonymous. The only thing I have going for me is a good memory. So I'm going to repeat all the great things I heard. And I'm going to repeat them to you because I want you to have the keys to freedom. I want you to know what the secret is. You know, for people who drink and come back and drink and come back, and I don't have any judgment about that, right? I've got one date, and that's not me. That's the power that I believe in. And it was fear. Not all fear is bad. You know, I was on a meeting, and this woman said that um, that the people who have one date, the problem with us is that we don't understand the people who are slippers, that they really believe they can drink and come back because they keep drinking and coming back. But I just want to tell you, if there's a possibility that not everybody makes it back, aren't you playing Russian roulette? I mean, aren't you playing with your life? And I'm not just talking about um, a physical life. I'm talking about a spiritual life, an emotional life, a psychological life, like Why be miserable when you can be joyful? So, all right, let me get to it. My sobriety date is May 21st, 1987. I have 36 uh, years and eight months of continuous sobriety. I have not been sane all those days, but I've been sober all those days. And I want to tell you something I didn't know when I got here. Alcoholics Anonymous is not a stop drinking program. This is a live right program. And what it teaches me is that I have a first step problem. The first step is the problem. The other 11 steps are the solution. And what is my first step problem? How do I get to joy and happiness and freedom? How do I become part of the not a glove lot people, right? I have to understand what my problem is so that I know what solution to apply. First problem is that I'm bodily different than my fellows, and I put liquor in my body, and I can't stop. Put your hand up. I can only see the first page, but hold your hand up. I'm going to go through the pages. Have you ever drank against your will? 
Have you ever sworn to God you were going to stop and drink? Have you ever said, I'm only going to have two and had eight? Have you ever said, I'm going to only drink till the prices go up after happy hour and drink? You are bodily different than your fellows. The other people can stop. You're not like the other people. Stop playing. Stop playing. Here's the second part of your first step problem. You have a voice in your head and it sounds like you and she or he is a liar. And it keeps lying to you, telling you it's going to be different this time. I got it. I haven't had a drink in a long time. Now that might be a few days. I haven't had a drink in a long time. I can safely drink again. I just, it's a lie. Nobody will know. <laughs> I had somebody call me and tell me that they were still speaking, kind of like lightweight circus speaking, but had been drinking for a couple years. And I was like, what? In the misery. It wasn't that they were drinking. This is what I want you to hear. The second part of your first step problem, which is the thing that centers in your mind, top of page 23 in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous says the problem centers in my mind. It's not that I'm drinking and lying. It's that I'm tortured by it. It's that I feel like a fraud. I feel like a fake. I feel like I already feel like I'm not good enough when I get here. I already feel like if you really knew me, you wouldn't like me when I get here. But then I mess around and I'm a fraud and a fake for real. It just eats me alive. It brings me a kind of misery that I can't be a glum. I got to be a glum lot. And so the voice in my head is going to say a couple things. And I want to say that the, the, that the problem centers our mind, but it doesn't emanate from our mind. It, it emanates from our spirit. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But, but I want to tell you about the four things in the chapter more about alcoholism, that's the state of mind that precedes a relapse. Number one, I haven't had a drink in a long time I can drink. That's a lie. You know what the book says? I love this. I'm like a man that's lost his legs. I'm not going to grow new ones. Once I've crossed the line physiologically so that I'm allergic to alcohol and I'm addicted to alcohol, I can't, I'll never gain control again. Never get, maybe I could, you know, once in a while, not get drunk beyond all reason. Maybe once in a while, I could not be in a blackout. Maybe once in a while, I cannot drunk call you. Maybe once in a while, I cannot drunk email and text. Maybe, but probably not. And here's the real test. The test isn't, can I sometimes manage it? Right, because that's what the voice in the head says. Well, three years ago, we, we were able to go and take a couple drinks and go home. That's not the test. Here's the test. When you drink, do you know what's going to happen? Because if you don't know what's going to happen, you got a problem. And the voice in my head is going to tell me these things. You haven't had a drink in a long time. You can safely drink. That's a lie. The voice, and this is all in the chapter more about alcoholism. The voice in my head is going to tell me, this one's my favorite. I can do some of the work and get all the benefits. You know what happens when I do some of the work? I start wanting the benefits, but I can't enjoy them. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still glum -lottish. And then I get resentful. The voice in my head starts talking to me. You know, they don't like you. Oh, they didn't speak. They didn't say hello. They passed you over for a promotion. You know what I mean? My spouse doesn't love me. It just, it's, it's man, the crazy talk. It will not stop. And the voice in my head tells me I can do some of the work. I can come to a couple meetings. I can do a thin run through maybe some of the steps. I can choose the steps like Chinese menu. I'm going to do one. I'm going to do 12. I'm gonna, yeah. It that don't work. It brings me to a lack of gratitude, which means I'm a glum lot. And that ultimately brings me to using something outside myself. Alcohol. Amazon boxes, drugs, sleeping with people. I mean, y'all know what you do. You know what you do. And it's that voice that leads me to do something that I know I shouldn't do, but the question really is why. And here's, I think, the answer. The third part of my first step problem, the thing that keeps me from being joyous and happy and free, 
the thing that keeps me trapped in glumness is my spiritual malady. You know, Ian, I don't know if you guys ever heard Ian. Go find Ian. Ian's amazing. Ian talks about how the spiritual malady is like the wind, and you can't see the wind. You can see evidence of the wind. You can see the leaves rustle. You can see the paper on the ground move, but you can't see the wind, right? And that's how my malady is. I don't even know that I'm in the malady. But the evidence tells me, right? What's the evidence? I'm restless. No matter where I am, I want to be someplace else. I'm irritable. Everybody's on my nerves. The people in the supermarket, the people in my job, the people in traffic, the pe- everybody, the people in the meeting, the people, everybody. And I'm discontent. No matter what I have, I'm unhappy. You know, I tell myself when I get this, I'll be happy. When I get this job, when I get this weight, when I get this relationship, when, and then no matter what I have, I'm miserable. Then the car I just had to have is a is a is a car note. Now I'm mad about that. The job I just had to have, now I'm mad about all the responsibilities. There's not enough money. You know what I mean? I'm just discontent. And that's evidence of the malady. So the question is, how do I get out of it? If my problem, the thing that keeps me glum lottish, the thing that keeps me from happiness and joy and freedom is the spiritual malady that leads me to crazy thinking, that leads me to crazy behavior. What can I do? Well, when you read the book, the book makes it clear. The book says that the, that the malady, and it says it indirectly, but it says it. It leads us to a kind of selfishness, self-centeredness, self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is my favorite, right? I don't have a lot of self-pity, but oh, I love self-righteousness, right? Self-righteousness, self-pity, self-flagellation, like I just beat myself up, oh, I'm nothing, or you're nothing, or both. I'm better than you, but not as good as her. It, 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 and it's all happening in my head. How do I get out of that? Because I, me personally, that's why I drink. That's why I drink. I didn't drink because I was thirsty. I drank because I was trying to wash down, wet down, ease down a, a problem that made, made me feel like my soul was on fire. And I'm here to tell you that there's another way. There's another way. Here's the real beauty of the other way. The real beauty of the other way is that no matter what's going on externally in your life, you can still choose freedom. I know that sounds crazy, but you can still choose freedom. You know, the book refers to it. It says job, no job, relationship, no relationship, right? Health, no health, money, no money. It doesn't matter. I have come to a place. How did I get here? These are the three tricks. I'm going to give you all five tools because this is a newcomer meeting, but I'm going to tell you the three tricks for me. You ain't going to like them, though unceasing, unsparing self-evaluation. Unceasing, unsparing self-evaluate. And I'm not talking about beating up on myself. You know, I'm in an extraordinarily difficult situation in the moment. And I have a lot of legitimate honest, logical reason to blame someone else. And I could tell you the story and you would agree with me. I mean, it's undeniable. But it doesn't matter why I'm disturbed. It only matters why I'm disturbable. Because no matter what's happening outside of me, if I do the work as outlined in the book, I can choose joy no matter what. So I got sidetracked. Here are the three tricks. Unceasing, unsparing self-evaluation. What did I do to put myself in a position to be harmed? What did I do to cause the person to behave this way? Is there some pattern that I create in my own life that brings me pain? Unceasing, I never stop looking at myself. Because guess what? Looking at you don't get me free. And the truth is I drank to avoid looking at myself because I thought that 
you know, it was the boogeyman. I, I haven't forgotten. I thought that unceasing, unsparing self-evaluation would kill me. Literally, I thought I would die if I had to really look at myself. And it turns out that that's a lie. The examination process doesn't tell me who I am. It tells me who I'm not. See, because I thought I was unworthy and unlovable and irredeemable and broken in a way that was just beyond repair. And none of that's true. I am perfectly imperfect. Here's the second pro tip. I have to learn in all things to turn to the power that I believe in. Now, you get to believe anything that you want to believe, right? The second step, you just got to, there's only one question in the second step, right? Do I now believe or am I even willing to believe, right? And I just got to believe it's not, the power's not me. And I don't even know that I think I'm the power. But here, let me give you, let me give you a test. You ever not apply for a job because you know you can't get it? You didn't apply for school because you know you're not going to get in? You're arguing with somebody and you're winning the argument, but they're not there? But you can answer for them because you know what they're going to say, right? Because you think you're God. That's the crazy in my head I'm talking about. And the truth is that I get to joy. And it really is, I get to live either on a practical basis or on a spiritual basis. And on a practical basis, life lives. There are certain trials and low spots, and I can be caught up in that or I can learn to live on a spiritual basis. And when people wrong me, I can say, well, God saved me from being angry and please help them. But for the loving grace of a God that I don't even understand, there go I. Why am I be mad at you if you're crazy? Why am I be mad at you if you're sick? Why, what? That's ridiculous. Somebody sent me something the other day that said arguing with an alcoholic is like trying to blow out a light bulb. That's right. Why would I do that? My best bet is to see what I can learn from the situation and step right over the problem into joy that's waiting for me. So this turning to God, this prayer thing, however you think of it, however you do it, for me, it's just a conversation. God, help me. Make me useful. Get me out of my own way. Show me what it is that you want me to learn. Help me be who you would have me be. Prayer. And I'm not praying like Santa Claus, God, like, oh, God, give me. No, 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 no. Because if I prayed for everything I wanted when I got here and I got all of it, I'd have gotten robbed. My life is extraordinary. Whether things are going my way or not. And things right now are not going my way. And it doesn't matter. I still am joyful and happy and free. Here's the third pro tip. I need to have contemplation. The book calls it meditation, right? I need to have quiet time, ideally in the morning, when I wake up and at night before I go to sleep to reflect on my day. The most valuable thing I'll ever get is time. How did I use it? How did I use it? On page 86 in the book, there, there are 10 questions. Was I resentful? Was I angry? Was I selfish? Was I dishonest? Was I kind and loving? Did I keep a secret I shouldn't have kept? And when I take that contemplation time at night and look at how I used my day. Two minutes. Thank you. I can begin to see how I live in a way that causes me the problem that I use as an excuse to drink. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. When I begin to really look at how I live my life, I can begin to see the way that I live that causes me the pain that I think justifies drinking. Here's my last thing. I've got 60 seconds. Here, for anybody that's new, here are the five things that'll set you free. Get a sobriety date. Protect it with your life. It's the most valuable thing you'll ever have. It is the thing that makes everything else possible. Guard it, love it, protect it. Number two, Get yourself a guide. We call them sponsors. Get someone that knows and loves the book of Alcoholics Anonymous that will walk you word by word, page by page, paragraph by paragraph through, and help you see yourself in the pages. Don't matter what Bill and Bob and Fitz and Hank did. What about you? You getting a freedom. Number three, 
Get yourself a home group of people, a group of people you're accountable to that are accountable to you. Four, get yourself a group of friends. And they don't have to be hee hee ka ka friends. They're people who you call and say, here's what's going on. Help me see the truth about myself. Number five, get yourself a service commitment in and outside the realms of Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, here's the number one thing that takes me to joy, giving joy to other people. I'm in the middle of a move. My hair is on fire. People don't know what that expression means. I feel like I'm drinking out of a fire hose, like it's so bad on my end. But I did a one o'clock commitment. I'm doing a four o'clock. I'm going to just show up because if I can be useful, it lightens the pain. If I can somehow help you, I'm helped by that. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm really excited to hear from you guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.